Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. We sincerely hope that you are having a wonderful day. If you enjoy today's presentation and find it informative, please feel free to subscribe to this channel, like the video and share the content. Today's video subject, how did cats become domesticated? It's been a long journey for these felines that we love so much. They've come a long way from roaming fields and hanging out on farmland to gracing our sofas. Over time, the genes have changed very little. The house cats of today are essentially the same as the quote-unquote wild cats from thousands of years ago. But the transformations are quite stark in terms of temperament and overall behavior, morphing into something that can briefly be described as, well, far more delicate. As history tells us, and I'll keep this rather brief as this isn't a history class, the ancestors of domestic cats, the felines that we all know and love today, moved from Asia into parts of Europe around 4400 BC, if not earlier. It's believed that cats during that time were wild, to say the very least, and lived off the land. Imagine a feral cat of today, I guess times 10, the wildest of the wild, completely free of any type of association. I wasn't around back then, but I can only speculate that cats were some rather tough customers. Felines back in the day, well, they ate rodents, almost like it was their full-time job. However, these wild cats slowly but surely began to frequent farming communities. Crops are quite appealing, and everyone knows that if a cat thinks there's food just around the corner, they'll have a go. I guess that much has never really changed. At any rate, the farmer and the feline over the course of time developed a mutual respect. I've got my crops. If you want to eat varmints and keep them away from my crops, eh, then you're, you're okay in my book. Now, while this is a far cry from calling these felines pets, as the years pressed on, cats not only had a decent level of human contact, felines were also born into this new world, this new environment with people. Cats born into this New land, if you will, had a different style of living compared to their parents and certainly the felines before them. These cats grew up in what can only be described as the human culture. The felines began to behave in ways that could be beneficial for a common association. In short, cats, by being around these farming communities, learned to domesticate themselves. It was, wasn't really taught, let's say, by the people. They just sort of learned it on the fly as a means to survive. In later years, cats from Africa and Egypt began to move about. This would have occurred between 1300 BC, perhaps a little later. It is also believed that people in these times began to transport cats by land and sea as a means to ward off rodents, a common theme, and <laughs> still a common theme today in some regards. The cat essentially became a tool rather than a pet. All of this moving about would explain the great feline takeover that would soon occur. All of this can serve to explain, at least generally speaking, why the genetic differences between wild cats of old and the house cats of today are just marginal at best. The cats didn't change, their environment did, and with it, their overall attitudes and behaviors. We've mentioned many times on this channel how cats will do what they need to do in order to get what they want. Have you ever seen a submissive cat, and I mean a super submissive cat? They'll roll around and put on a grand performance in an effort to let you know that they mean no harm. Of course, this is often done in an effort to get something, mainly food. And going back to these early, early days, it's pretty much the same. Once cats strolled into the farmland and they realized, hey, they could dwell in a generally safe environment, especially if they didn't do anything silly like, I don't know, attempt to bite the farmer's leg, they realized, hey, this might be the place to be, the place to settle down. Cats morphed into more gentle creatures, a bit tamer, and they did this for their own survival and for the better good of their offspring. And while all of this can seem, as a whole, rather subtle, 
If you're just skimming over it as a brief history lesson, the final result proved to be life-changing, not only for cats in a whole, but for all of us. Tolerance, that is the word of the day, is what separates the cat on your sofa that's looking at you while you watch this video from some wild cat in a grassy field just ready to pounce with no regard for anything. And while that is certainly not to say there aren't mean and unruly cats roaming the land today, it's still not quite the same. Common felines don't chase after random people. I mean, it's not like a bear attack. You're not uh, just checking the mail and some random cat runs at you from 50 yards away and, you know, jumps on your back. Well, tolerance. Thousands of years of, let's just call it programming, essentially fine-tuned cats and uh, sort of what they are today. It's uh, why we don't have a natural common fear of just your common feline. House cats, on the contrary, they, they, they do have an independent streak a mile long, and they can be aggressive if you press the wrong buttons. But those traits are essentially all that remain from, say, 4000 BC. The domestic cat of today as a whole is unrecognizable from the felines of Europe, Asia, and Egypt. It took a long time, but cats, they domesticated themselves. And not unlike today, they did what they had to do to win the game, to be successful. In many ways, they mastered the art of manipulation. We've talked about that before as well. It took thousands of years, but they figured out a way for us to do most all of the heavy lifting. And that brings us right until up till the present time, the present second. Your cat in that air-conditioned home getting petted while you serve up the next meal. Think about it. I'd say they won. The feline transformation uh, from the outhouse to the penthouse. Not bad, not bad at all. Garfield's ancestors, well, they would be quite proud. Little crash course history lesson on how the cats we know and love today, well, how they came to be. And once again, feel free to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if this type of content is of interest to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.